my duty is to describe what we want to do concerning the dissemination of the results of this project. We wish to create a, a handbook, a book, a text, which we can use to disseminate the results of this project. But not only the results intended as a communication of what we have done, but also to train a group of people on a method. A method that we have used not only in the process and in the Transformer project, but also in other projects. Open Corporation and Dress Code projects. And these two projects are directly linked to this one. Obviously, this manual will have as key points uh, multinational companies because we take care of studying multinational companies in relation with its supply chain. So, this is what has to emerge from this manual. I've been very lucky maybe unlucky, because those that came before me uh, during this morning's activities, and uh, especially in the afternoon, everybody mentioned uh, topics that I uh, had wished to include in my, in my manual. So I would start from the first slide, saying that Miguel Alberello this morning was talking about anticipating change. And I have noticed that the EWC directive is based on anticipating change. And at the same time, we are dealing with a um, multinational with a variable geometry, which has destructuring and uh, restructuring processes going on constantly. So let's start from the fundamentals. What is interesting for us is that in our legal framework we have a Charter of Fundamental Rights and this Charter of Fundamental Rights allows us to guarantee the safeguard and dignity of workers. So now we have to export these uh, principles and this uh, mission, one would say, over to the supply chain because not always workers in the supply chain, and actually very often workers in the supply chain are excluded from these two principles, the principle of safeguarding work and dignity for work. Uh, therefore, I, uh, I invite you to establish the first lexical convention that I wish to establish and uh, Guido de Jong, Ornella uh, Cilona, please don't be angry with me. Could we change the idea of standard in fundamental rights at work? What do I mean? If we think that standards are a legal technique, I'm talking as a lawyer here, a, a technique that's... Um, framed as a series of indications, minimum indications, depending on the idea, that are related to, for example, working hours or wages, but also any other kind of um, task or a rule regarding uh, work. Maybe from a trade union point of view, we should use Terms that are more useful to us maybe use our Charter of Fundamental Rights as a minimum that has to be recognized to the workers, a minimum that has to be applied to the workers of the supply chain. As the involvement of the human being, which because workers are human beings, so with an ethical uh, aspect 
which is important because it recognizes what our legal framework uh, describes as fundamental rights. So uh, applying fundamental rights to the supply chain. And these fundamental rights are absolutely... You can proceed, Mara, thank you. These fundamental rights are commonly uh, acquired uh, in our legal framework. So what is the idea that I want to spread with this um, slide I'm showing to you? We have uh, the European Union, but in general, in this uh, globalized world, a commercial logic prevails. A logic that puts uh, commercial exchanges at the first place in importance for uh, in the interest of multinational companies. And for a very long time, uh, nation states uh, managed to somewhat contain these commercial logics, guaranteeing a welfare state and a balance between the inclinations of multinational companies and uh, therefore uh, weakening somewhat this uh, commercial logic. Today, due to the globalization process, multinational companies uh, are uh, way stronger than states. They're way more powerful, more flexible, and they do not have those boring democratic processes within that uh, do not allow the implementation of instantaneous decisions. Multinational companies are not subject to any kind of democracy, this from a practical point of view. And as a consequence, they certainly have overcome the autonomy of nation states. So today, from an economic point of view, I think Anna Maria tomorrow will tell us, will talk to us about a lot of things. Anna Maria will not come tomorrow. <laughs> we mentioned her too often. So from a commercial point of view, to uh, impede these international exchanges, the only way is to introduce uh, protectionist uh, barriers. I'm seeking a, um, a legal solution. I invite you to, uh, to sign a transnational agreement, meaning that if we manage to spread a series of fundamental rights, automatically uh, workers will be more uh, protected and therefore have access to services and mass benefits and therefore, the price of goods will have a social impact. You, it won't be necessary to introduce uh, protectionist barriers, but through rights, you will bring uh, dignity on the workplace and in some way go back to a market that is traditionally open, both in Europe and in the US, but that recognizes rights and is capable of exporting these rights also outside of commercial boundaries. How can we achieve this kind of result? Well, in the index that we have uh, developed as uh, for the, the Transformers project, and I once again thank Michaela Alberello for the comments and observations that she has done earlier on the index, let's start from a representation of workers. And most of all, let's start from a right to information and consultation. By shifting our point of view, now probably in the idea of this uh, manual and this project, we have reached a point where we're not receiving information any longer from the employer. The information process, at least well, considering 
our our person our experience in this project is something that is activated automatically and that you can verify in the information that the multinational company communicates therefore why do we use uh, databases and uh, sources that are typical of the commercial processes because the workers representative nowadays has to face a mechanism that is much more important and uh, hard to manage. So information of, on multinational companies and most of all information on the supply chain. Consultation is certainly has as an object the information that the workers representative has received from the multinational company, but also it is a form of a preemptive uh, study on the multinational company, meaning the company you will have to uh, confront yourself with. Because we have a problem, the problem that Ornella Chirona was talking about earlier. We, are, we're, we have an iceberg right in front of us, and uh, we absolutely ignore the, the, the total size of this iceberg. Therefore, we should uh, study something that has been said this afternoon as well. We have to study the impact of corporations' uh, activities and their reputation. The results in terms of reputation that these impacts uh, cause. Because information allows us to uh, bargain and negotiate at a certainly national level, but also multinational level and transnational. And here we must start thinking about the supply chain. We must uh, start talking about the supply chain. And this is a concept that has already been expressed earlier today. If there is a multinational company that recognizes in some countries, in some contexts, some fundamental rights to workers, but it usually leaves without any rights and safeguards, the initial and the final part of production and services. So the initial part of production and the final part of services. So we should go back doing uh, a specific trade union uh, job. We must create solidarity among workers. So the more uh, safeguarded workers will have the necessity and the responsibility of taking care also uh, of the workers of the supply chain. How should they do this? Well, I am always thinking about this transnational collective agreement. You, you, you may go forward with the slides, Mara. A transnational collective agreement, which has to be coordinated with the national labor agreement. And obviously, today this national labor contract is in a crisis situation, is being a it's under attack by employers. Mara, let's go on. These are the actors. This will be a chapter of our, an important chapter of our manual. And obviously, we are considering national and European trade unions as the main actors of this bargaining process. Therefore, they will have a key part, key role in the manual. But in this um, tool toolkit, we should try to use, for example, all those associations, NGOs, all those subjects uh, that we could define as uh, interested parties, stakeholders and which have a relation with the multinational company. And obviously, European Works Councils, because European Works Councils today are one of the only forms of representation of workers at a European level. And obviously, we have the necessity to uh, use 
though these European Works Councils from a supply chain point of view. I had already presented you with uh, this slide in another meeting we had. I'd propose with the aim of uh, analyzing in a more in-depth way this work on the supply chain, a series of clauses that could be suggested to workers that go and negotiate a transnational labor agreement, which are aimed and are based on the supply chain, as uh, benchmarked on the supply chain. So protecting trade union rights, which is a clause that we usually find in the EWC agreements, and which the directive foresees as a form of protection for workers and for those that are part of the European Works Council. Well, we should extend these rights also to the works workers in the supply chain. And why not? We should also include, as we have seen in some good practices of transnational agreements, a charter of uh, for training and credits for uh, workers of the supply chain. So using uh, part of those transnational labor contracts, which are uh, very advanced, to so guarantee and protect those workers that at this point we can consider as more disadvantaged uh, in their relation with a multinational company. Let's jump some slides. Yeah, this one. So these are 10 points in favor of companies in the supply chain within the EWC agreement. And uh, here I'm only uh, advancing proposals that we will then um, express in a draft uh, manual that we will send as soon as possible in Italian and uh, translate it. But anyways, to start thinking that some referrals to the supply chain must be included in the WC agreements. And we should recognize within this transnational agreement, because the EWC agreement is a form of transnational agreement, some form of acknowledgement of at least the right to information on the regarding the supply chain and the suppliers. Therefore, guaranteeing a series of fundamental rights for workers of the supply chain. Well, another proposal is the following. Could we imagine that workers in the supply chain, or at least when we are able to identify a well-defined process within the supply chain, therefore something a practical. Can we think that these workers take part, participate to the WC's activities? Maybe with no voting rights, maybe just as a form of audit, but could they participate, these uh, workers? They should take part to the activities of the EWC. Because anticipating change, if we fail to do so, the first workers to be affected will be the workers of the supply chain and not the ones in the main company. Of course, it's a very soft form of involvement, but it is a form of involvement and it will create a solidarity and a network among workers that until now we were not able to to create. And why is that? I'll tell you this. Because the form of representation of workers in the supply chain is a form of representation which is uh, lacking. 
multinational companies want to avoid these kind of forms of representation. Uh, in the peripheral segments of its uh, production cycle. Therefore, creating even uh, just a symbolic form of representation in European Works Council, which involves workers that are not directly employed by the multinational company, but which economically are dependent from the multinational companies, does create a form of economic solidarity, which allows workers to be uh, informed on, for example, the restructuring processes and updating processes of the multinational company. Concerning some of the and I'll close here, some technical indications on the manual. So the um, draft manual hoping that we are we'll be able to um, complete it uh, within the end of the next month I'm looking at Marash seems to approve maybe even less than that less than that okay so I'm talking about partners and all those that work together with us in this project and all the stakeholders of the project our intention is to send you within this deadline I have just mentioned the first uh, version of this manual so that you can then answer to us with observations and comments and why not even corrections if you believe so and uh, use it as Michaela look at me using and use it as a form of a test in the Barcelona course in September 2018. So by that day there should be something uh, definitive so that we can We can uh, use the observations that the uh, teachers and the people using the manual will uh, signal to us all the anomalies that maybe we haven't noticed. So this is our intention. In the next month, you'll receive, if we can manage also, you will receive the, the first version of the manual and the translations. Then you will send us comments, doubts, observations, and then in September we will do these tests, let's say, in Barcelona. Thank you.